morning. Good morning and welcome to Providence. Good to see everybody this morning. And if you are visiting with us, if you fill out a visitor's card on the back of the pew in front of you, and if there's any way Providence can help minister to you, please let us know. Fill it out, place it in offering plates by the door, give it to myself or, or Sean at the close of the service. By way of announcements, this Wednesday we'll have our regular scheduled programs and uh, then there's a note for all of our graduates. If you are graduating from high school or college, please turn your name in to the church office by May 14th. And then next Sunday, the 30th, we'll have our monthly fellowship luncheon, which will be fried chicken will be provided, so bring a side and a dessert. And then our homebound members, Miss Naomi Huggins, you can send her a card, you can call her, but most importantly, we pray for Miss Naomi and uh, as being our homebound member. If you turn over on the back, there's a list of all of our church information. If you need to get a hold of anybody in our church, there's a list of names, numbers, and emails. Is there any other announcements I may have missed? If none, let's pray and we'll begin our service. Father, we do thank you for a beautiful morning. We thank you for the, for the time and the opportunity to come out to sing praises to you. And Father, we pray that uh, we pray for Sean as he stands before us in the absence of our pastor. We do pray for our pastor as he's away from us. We pray for travel and mercies. And uh, Father, we pray for our hearts to be our hearts to be receptive and our minds to be cleared. That as your word goes forward, our hearts are receptive to to not only hear that word but to be doers of that word and to be active in our. Uh, ministry as a member of the body of Christ. We thank you. We praise you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As we begin our uh, worship and song, if you will, take your hymnal and stand and join with us and turn to 243. 243, please stand.
think we wanted to make sure um, we were having such a great time. We, <laughs> but we wanted to make sure Ms. Linda knew she needed to come back home. <laughs> message, but it's what God has put on my heart this morning. So, This sermon today is piggybacking off of what Don preached last week, um, the importance of sharing our faith and the importance of evangelism, and I just believe it's what the Lord is speaking to us right now. So the title of my sermon today is Our Urgent Mission. Our Urgent Mission. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we love You. And we thank You for this opportunity to come together 
and hear Your Word and hear Your message, Lord. And I just pray this morning that You would take myself, this weak vessel of clay, and You would strengthen me by the power of the Holy Spirit and speak through me, Father. I desire to be Your vessel today to reach Your people, Lord. I pray hearts would be opened and eyes would be fixed on You as we study You and learn more about You, Lord. We love You and we thank You for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, Amen. Church, there are so many glorious promises in the Bible. Promises for us, to us. But the most amazing promise is the promise of our eternal home, of heaven. And when we get to heaven, we're going to be with Him in glory. It's going to be perfect. There's going to be no sin. There's going to be no pain, no sickness. Uh, Nothing bad will be in heaven. It will be as everything should have been. It will be perfect. And we will be worshiping Jesus forever. We will be free from bondage, free from everything that holds us back. And we look forward to that. But as amazing as heaven is going to be, did you know that there's something we can't do in heaven? And you may be thinking, of course, we can't sin. But that's not what I'm talking about. There's something good we can't do in heaven. The one good thing that we can't do in heaven is evangelize. Share our faith. That cannot happen in heaven because everyone in heaven is a believer. Everyone's been saved. Everyone's under the blood of Jesus there. Everyone has relationship with Him. So the only opportunity we have to share our faith, to evangelize, is right here on earth right now. This is our one opportunity. And we don't have a long time. That's why it's an urgent mission. So I want to invite you guys this morning to turn to Luke chapter 16, starting in verse 19. And by the way, the last three messages I've preached here have been out of the book of Luke. And that's, I, I did not plan for that. It's just kind of happened. But that's interesting. Um, but as we're turning to Luke chapter 16, I just want to give us a little bit of context just so we understand what's going on because we never want to interpret the Bible if we don't understand what's going on or what's leading up to it. So here in the 16th chapter of Luke, Jesus has just got done teaching a large group, a large group of people like He would do. And after He's done this, He gathers His disciples together and He's teaching His disciples now in parables. And for those of us who don't know what a parable is, a parable is a short story that Jesus would teach. He didn't, he didn't invent the parable, He perfected the parable. But a parable is a short story that's not necessarily true, but it teaches us about God or about the kingdom of God. So this story today is not a literal story, it's not a true story, but it's something that Jesus taught His followers so they would understand eternity, understand what that is like. So read with me. In Luke chapter 16, starting in verse 19, God's Word says this, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked His swords. So Jesus is is telling His disciples this story and He's showing two different characters. On one hand, we have this rich man who's clothed in purple and fine clothes, very nice uh, style he's living in. And the point here, it's a rich man who has a lot of good things. And then we have the poor man, Lazarus. Now this is not the same Lazarus that Jesus raised from the dead. This is a, uh, like we said, it's a parable. This is a made up story, but it's a hypothetical person. But Lazarus is described as a man that's extremely poor. And, and in this story, he's begging for scraps that fell off of the rich man's table. And he has nothing. He has absolutely nothing. The only thing that the Bible tells us he has are sores that cover his body. 
So it's two very different people that Jesus is showing here. One man very rich, one man very poor. Look with me in verse 22. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water to cool my tongue, for I'm in anguish in this flame. So now we see in this story that Lazarus and this rich man have both equally died. They, they both experience the same thing on earth. But what happens is in this story, Lazarus, the poor man, goes to Abraham's side, the faithful this represents heaven. He goes to heaven and the other one, the rich man, he goes to Hades, which means death, eternal death, hell, separation from God. And we know that you get to heaven by faith in Jesus and you don't get to heaven by rejecting Jesus. So we know that is how they got there. But, but what Jesus is doing right here is he's showing us. He's showing us a picture, and He's showing His followers a picture of the two options we have. There's thousands of religions, but there's two options. Heaven or hell. Follow Jesus or reject Jesus. Now, very quickly, I just want to show you something that God does in this story. God takes this poor man, Lazarus, who had a terrible life, awful life, did nothing enjoyable about his life, but the moment he gets to heaven... He's with God and He has every spiritual blessing and He's face to face with Jesus in perfection. And, and that's what God does. So let me just encourage you very quickly that the sicknesses you have, the stress you have, the anxieties, the pains, all of these earthly things we have, we will not experience in heaven. And there's, there's so much to this story. There's so many different directions I could go. So many different things I could mention. But... I really believe what God has put on my heart is very simple. I don't want to go off into those other directions. I want to keep it simple this morning. And the focus is that hell is real. Heaven is real. And we have an urgent mission to get people into relationship with God so they don't experience hell. That's the truth of the Bible. And it's not a popular message. There's not a lot of preachers that are going to want to talk about hell. Because it, 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 it's not fun to talk about. You're not joyous. It's not a happy message. But we need to do it. And the reason I'm doing it is because I'm burdened about this. It weighs heavy on my heart for the people that I care about. The people that I love. To go to heaven. Because I can think right now. And there's names on my heart. There's people that I have a relationship with. That I know. That I've known for a long time. That I know if they died right now. They wouldn't go to heaven. And that keeps me up at night. The thought of a soul being away from Jesus for eternity. Keeps me up at night. And... One thing I love about our generation, my generation, I guess, but um, they ask a lot of questions about God. I think it's a great thing. And a question I always hear is, how could a loving God send people to hell? That's a good question. But I want to suggest to you that anyone asking that question doesn't understand what heaven is. That's right. Heaven is not a place where good people go. It's not a place where, where, where it's just goodness everywhere. See, heaven is... The eternal relationship with God. Yeah. Face to face. So look, God is going to offer you relationship on earth. And if you reject that relationship, He's not going to force you into heaven, into an eternal relationship with Him. His love can't be forced. So the only loving thing God could do is to let you reject Him. Let you have free will. So the message today is people are going to hell. People are going to hell. And if you're a follower of Jesus, that should 
hurt your heart. It should hurt your heart to know that that if you have a friend that doesn't know Jesus, if you have a family member that doesn't know Jesus, a coworker, whatever it is, if they don't get that right, they're going to spend their eternity separated. And thank goodness it's God who saves, but we are His hands and feet. We are responsible for getting His message out. That's why it's our urgent mission this morning. Because it's our responsibility. So, I've got two points for us just to help us uh, understand this. Help us break it down for our personal lives. And my first point this morning is, we can't wait. We can't wait. Our, our life, our time on earth is too short. Did you know that the average life expectancy is 79 years old? In 2023, it's 79 years old. And that, that seems like a long time, or it did when I was younger, but you start to realize that's not that long of a time. I'm sure many of us can attest to that. It goes by really, really quick. And even more than that, on God's eternal timeline, 79 years is not even the snap of a finger. So I don't, I don't share that to scare anyone here this morning. I share that to say, we got to get moving. We've got we've to start evangelizing because this is our one opportunity to do that. And I know this is heavy stuff and it's, it, it's, it's not stuff we like to think about, but... If you would, right now, if you would, take a minute and think, is there anyone I know that doesn't know Jesus? Think about that person. Or many people. Think about that person. I would bet we all have at least one. So those people in your life, those people in my life, as the hands and feet of God, let's reach those people. Let's share the message of Jesus to those people. And if you don't know the message of Jesus, let's put it very simply. I'm guilty. I need Savior. We are all guilty. We all need a Savior. And Jesus is our Savior. But if you feel like I still can't, I, I just can't muster up the words. I get, I get anxious when I start to speak about this. Or, or I just don't have the knowledge. If, if that is you, that's fine. God is still going to use you. And there's still ways to do it. Right now, Don and I are working on a gospel track. It's just a bifold piece of paper. On the front it says, how can I be saved? And on the inside it has all this information. It's really simple, easy, but it has everything that could possibly be said. So you don't even have to say anything. We're going to have those printed hopefully next week. And we're going to have them in the foyer. Grab 30. It doesn't matter. Just, just have them in your purse, in your, in your backpack, whatever. Give them to your school. Give them to your, your, your co-workers, your family. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to know what to say. Just hand it to them and say, I want you in heaven for eternity. That's all we have to do. Oh, I pray that the Holy Spirit would put a burden in our hearts to see people in eternity. Look with me at verse 27. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And repent means change of mind, means turn around. Verse 31, And he said to them, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. <coughs> so what's happening right here is this rich man in hell, he's crying out to the inner cedar uh, Abraham, and we know that Jesus is our only inner cedar now, but this is an interesting story where Abraham is interceding in the chasm between heaven and hell. And he... He tells, he pleads with Abraham. He says, please, please go, go warn my family. Go tell them how terrible this is. So the rich man has already given up on himself. He's already realized, I'm not getting out of here for eternity. He knows that. He's given up. 
But now he's saying, please go warn my family. Go tell all my loved ones. This is real. And Abraham says, they have Moses. They have the prophets. They have the entire Old Testament. They have everything that God has already done. If they don't believe that, they're not going to believe someone coming back from the dead. And the rich man says, no, no, no. Someone coming back from the dead will surely show the power of God. But Abraham says in verse 31, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. So what is he talking about? He's talking about this story, but, but, but let, me just, let me just show you guys this. Who's telling this story? Jesus is telling this story. Jesus came back from the dead. He literally did this. And, and His message is rejected every day. <coughs> you think if someone raised from the dead, surely people would believe in the power of God. But that's what we're living right now. And still so many don't believe. The reality of this world is, there, is, is we're hardened to the truth of Jesus, to the love of Jesus, that He died for us and resurrected for us. But it's our job to show that message. It's our job to love people with that message. My second point this morning is that we are not biblically loving people if we're not sharing the Gospel. We're not biblically loving people if we're not sharing the Gospel. And this... This point kind of put me under a little bit of conviction to think about, to realize, because you think loving people is just, is just being nice and, and showing kindness and, and, and doing things for other people. But, but if I, am I really loving someone if I don't share the message that gets them to eternity? Like, if I tell you I love you, but I don't care where you spend eternity... Is that, is that actually love at all? I've heard so many people say, and, and their line of thinking is, I'll just love God, and I'll just love people on my own, but, but I'm not going to force Jesus down anyone's throat. I'm not going to be that person. And that sounds really great, but I promise you, when that person wakes up in hell for eternity, they're not going to be thinking, oh, thank goodness, that person, that friend of mine that's a Christian, didn't force their faith on this. No, they're going to be thinking, how could they have known this and not told me? I want you to imagine this scenario with me. I think it's powerful. I heard it a couple weeks ago. Just imagine we're, we're, we're best friends and we're hanging out, watching a basketball game, a football game, whatever. And I say... <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go outside, gotta go out back, gotta let my dog out. And when I get to the back door, I notice there's a huge snake right at the back door, so I close it quickly and take my dog back inside. And as I come back to the living room, I notice you're standing up and you're going to the back door, and I say, What are you doing? And you say, Oh, I'm just gonna get some fresh air, go to the back door. And I say, Alright, sounds good. And when you get to the back door, this big snake jumps up and bites you. And you come back to me and you're like, did you know there's a snake out there? And I'd be like, yeah. And you're like, why didn't you tell me? Amen. There's a snake in the backyard. Yes, yes. That snake is hell. And as, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, if we're not telling people about that, if we're not warning people, we're not showing the love of Jesus. It is not loving if I didn't tell you about that snake. It's not loving for us if we don't tell people about eternity. Real biblical love says, I don't care what this person thinks about me after this. I don't care if they judge me. I don't care if they don't even like me. If they spend eternity in heaven, that's a win. I don't care how crazy I look. If this person gets saved and is going to heaven, that's a win. We are on an urgent mission. We don't have time to wait. 79 years is the average lifespan. It's going to fly by. 
Let's get people saved. Let's get people saved. So I want to encourage y'all not to just leave church today, go get Mexican food or whatever we do after church, but I want y'all to take this with us. And I know we say that, but it, it's so easy to leave the church doors and just go back to live. But this is the type of word from God that we need to hide in our hearts and remember that we live in a dying world. And there is so many people, when we go to the store, anywhere, that there is so many people that don't know Jesus. And we are walking around with the Holy Spirit inside of us, keeping that to ourselves. This is a serious passage today. And when we read this story, I wonder, when you hear this story, who do you resonate with? Because I really hope when you hear this story, you resonate with Lazarus. And you're thinking to yourself, man, I'm so glad I'm saved. I pray that's what's going on in your mind right now as you hear this. You think, wow, that's a great news that, that, that when I die, I'm going to heaven and I'm going to be face to face with Jesus. Praise God for that. I'm thankful I made that decision to give my life to Him. But if you're hearing this story and you're thinking, man, I might be the rich man in this story. If you're even doubting, I don't, I don't know where I would wake up if I were to die right now. I don't know where I would be. Today's message is about sharing this, this, this gospel message, but I can't miss this opportunity to share it right now. So if you are sitting here today and you're, you're thinking, I don't know where I would spend eternity. If you're thinking, I don't know if I would wake up and I would see Jesus. If that, if that even resonates with you at all, I pray today would be the day you enter into relationship with Jesus. Make the best decision of your life today. We can do it right here, have prayer and, and, or, or outside, wherever you're comfortable with. But don't leave today without having a relationship with Jesus. Because there's nothing more valuable than that. There's nothing more valuable than having an intimate relationship with Him. And yes, it's for eternity. And yes, the goal is to get to heaven with Him. But you're missing out on real life. On abundant life. If you've never experienced living life with Jesus. Living life in full joy. In full peace. And all of these beautiful things that He gives us. And if you do have a relationship with Him, if you do know Jesus and you're saved, that's amazing news. But now it's time to get to work. Now it's time to get on mission. We are His hands and His feet. Let's go and spread His Word. And remember, if you don't feel comfortable uh, speaking the Gospel to someone, that's okay because we're getting tracks. And all you have to do is hand it out and say, I want to spend eternity with you. But we don't have time to waste. We need to get on mission to bring people to Jesus. So in a moment here, we're going to close and um, sing our final hymn. And, 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 if, and if there's anyone here that's not saved, I pray you'd make that decision to follow Jesus. Would you guys bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank You for the love that You show us each day. And Father, I thank You for the Gospel message that saved my soul and saved so many of our souls. Father, I pray as we leave this place, we can remember the importance of the Gospel and that if we don't do something, that could be the difference in someone's eternity. So Father, thank You for Your love and for Your grace. And please help us to have a new passion, a new burden to bring this message to people that don't know You, Jesus. 
Lord, we love you. And we praise you. We devote this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.